Respiratory therapists are vital members of the healthcare team. They work closely with doctors and nurses to treat patients with acute and chronic cardiopulmonary conditions. In general, there are two types of respiratory therapists, RRTs and CRTs. But what's the difference? Well, simply put, a CRT or Certified Respiratory Therapist holds the entry-level credential that is obtained by passing the TMC exam with a low-cut score. RRTs or Registered Respiratory Therapists hold a more advanced credential that is obtained by passing the TMC exam with a high-cut score as well as passing the Clinical Sims exam. Keep watching if you want to learn more about the differences and similarities between a CRT and RRT, including their roles, responsibilities, and educational requirements. So what exactly is the difference between a CRT and an RRT? Well, as previously mentioned, both are highly skilled professionals who provide life-saving care to patients with cardiopulmonary conditions. They are both licensed and trained to perform the same job duties and are even employed in the same setting. But the primary difference between CRTs and RRTs is their level of credentialing. The RRT credential is preferred by many employers because it demonstrates a higher level of knowledge and competence. Therefore, in general, RRTs often have more opportunities for advancement and higher salaries. They may also be eligible for positions that are not available to CRTs such as management and supervisory roles. So now let's talk a bit more about CRTs. A certified respiratory therapist is an RT who has obtained the entry-level credential granted by the NBRC. This is the minimum requirement a respiratory therapist needs to apply for a license to practice respiratory care. As I mentioned, this credential is obtained by passing the TMC exam with a low-cut score. After earning the CRT credential, the candidate becomes eligible to apply for a license to practice respiratory care in the state where they plan to work. However, they are not eligible to take the clinical SIMS exam until they have passed the TMC exam with a high cut score. This is the additional step required to earn the RRT credential. A registered respiratory therapist is an RT who has obtained the highest credential granted by the MBRC. This is the highest standard requirement a respiratory therapist needs to apply for a license to practice respiratory care. The first step in earning the RRT credential involves passing the TMC exam with a high cut score. This will reward you with the CRT credential and make you eligible to take the clinical SIMS exam. Then once you pass the CSE, you will be awarded the RRT credential. So now let's talk about the salary. As previously mentioned, the RRT credential is preferred by most employers because it demonstrates a higher level of knowledge and competence. Therefore, RRTs often earn a higher salary than CRTs. Of course, this is just a generalization and this is not always the case. But according to salary.com, the median annual salary for CRTs is around 64000 while the medium annual salary for RRTs is bumped up to around 69000 While that's not a huge difference, RRTs do earn slightly more, which can add up over the course of your career. And I also often get asked about the education requirements for each credential. Just know that both CRTs and RRTs must complete an accredited respiratory therapy program to practice respiratory care. Therefore, the education requirements for both credentials are the same. This means that the steps for becoming a CRT or RRT are almost the same as well. This includes the following. First, you need to have a natural desire to help others. Then you must graduate from high school, take the required prerequisite courses, apply to your favorite schools, enroll in the program, complete the required coursework, complete the required clinical experience, graduate with an associate's degree, pass the MBRC credentialing exams, apply for a license, and apply for a job. The only difference is in step number nine, which involves the MBRC credentialing exams. Again, to become an RRT, 
you need to pass the TMC exam with a high cut score and then pass the clinical sims. This is the only additional step required to earn the RRT credential. So you may be wondering if it's worth advancing from a CRT to an RRT. The answer is that it depends on your personal goals and preferences. If you're happy with your current salary and position, then there's no need to pursue the RRT credential. However, if you're looking to earn a higher salary and have more job opportunities, then advancing from a CRT to an RRT is probably a good idea. And this is something that I typically recommend for all respiratory therapists because remember, the RRT credential demonstrates a higher level of expertise and also makes you eligible to advance your career by acquiring other specialty credentials that are offered by the MBRC. And if you want to support the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And there should be some other helpful videos popping up on your screen right about now that I think you'll enjoy. And just a quick reminder, we are not doctors. This video is for informational purposes only. Thank you so much for watching. Have a blessed day. And as always, breathe easy, my friend.